Belfast during World War II. So we know Belfast was subjected to blitz attacks during uh, 1941. And we know this is one of the, uh, the case studies to prepare for um, the pursuit of sovereignty and impact of partition, which is um, Ireland section three in your exam. Um, if you're doing ordinary level, again, the details on this will help you fill out a paragraph, either a 30, 40 uh, mark question. If you're doing an essay, this will be a, a, a wider kind of question about um, Ireland during World War II. Lots of useful information. Again, you've got a model answer on um, this to a higher level question in your notes. And um, I would highly recommend that you kind of prepare this along with the work we did on um, the emergency. Um, I have a video actually I did on the emergency last year. I'll, I'll throw that up. Um, I think that would be useful. So you're talking about not just Northern Ireland during the Second World War, but also Ireland. I think that's, if, if this comes up, it'll be more likely to be a full topic essay if they included um, the whole of Ireland. I'll do this really, really quickly. So what do we know about Belfast during World War II? We know that um, the bombing of Belfast in um, 1941 was the most important event on the island of Ireland during the Second World War. We know that at the beginning of World War II, Ireland was a, uh, as it remains, an island which was partitioned into two states. And the southern state, which was by that stage known as ERA, don't forget, was known as ERA, since uh, Bunrock Nahar in 1937, the Irish Free State name had been dropped and ERA um, adopted. And the Irish Free State, for reasons that I've explained in the other video on the emergency, had opted to remain neutral and not take sides in the war. But Northern Ireland was part of Britain and therefore was a belligerent state, was involved in the war. Okay? So that's important that you know that, 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 that there was that difference uh, between North and South. At the beginning of the war, James Craig, you remember him from 1912 and from um, 1921, government of, sorry, 1920, Government of Ireland Act. So he was still around as the Prime Minister. And I suppose the point is that he, he was, if I can be um, blunt, he was kind of past it and he wasn't a dynamic leader. He died at the beginning of the war and there was a lack of dynamism, uh, dynamism at the top of the government of Northern Ireland, which is, which of course, by the nature of the state, a unionist government. But anyway, he was replaced by John Andrews. John Andrews was um, part of the problem, I suppose, in terms of the preparation of Northern Ireland for uh, its participation in this conflict. And essentially, his inefficiency and his ineffective leadership meant that when um, um, the uh, when Belfast came under threat, when Northern Ireland, Derry as well, of course, came under threat, uh, there was a lack of preparation. So, what do we know? They did make some efforts because they saw what happened in Spain during the Civil War, Britain did, and London and uh, the big industrial cities were attacked pretty much straight away at the start of the war by German bombers. So, there was preparation done. So, what do we know? There was a light balloon barrage. We know what that means. We know that, that basically meant that it made it difficult for um, sorry, there's somebody coming in to collect our bag. Um, close the door, please, after you. That made it difficult for them to um, to, to, to um, have low um, height flights. So um, um, that was one security measure. We know that RAF Squadron 245 was transferred to Northern Ireland. I think it was Aldergrove Airport they were transferred to. They were transferred to. But that squadron was not equipped with aircraft that could fly at night. And most of the bombing took place at night. So essentially... It was a wasted resource and that there were actually believe it or not no searchlights which would be needed for night attacks to pick out the the, the planes above there were no searchlights in the state of northern ireland until april 1941. so this is an example of how there was some preparation but it was ineffectual and inefficient preparation in addition to that there was really no um sense of the urgency of preparing for the um, impact of a serious raid. So there weren't enough shelters. There was inadequate provision of shelters. So uh, the population of Belfast, there were enough spaces in air raid shelters for about one in every four uh, citizens of the state in Belfast. That was not enough. What were the other three quarters going to do when the bombs start falling? There were, they didn't have enough um, ACAC guns. ACAC guns are guns that you fire up into the sky, try and knock aircraft out of the sky anti-aircraft guns. They only had 24 heavy ACAC guns and 14 light ACAC guns in the entire six counties. Nowhere near the requirement uh, if they were going to be attacked by, um, by the Luftwaffe. 
each German attack had an average of 200 heavy bombers, these Heinkel bombers. Now, 200 bombers, and at best, you've got maybe four, less than 40 guns firing up, and you know those guns, very unlikely to get direct hits. So the only way Akak -Ak was effective is if you had a carpet of it firing up into the sky. So essentially, Belfast was open to attack, and it was going to be attacked. It was obvious in your paragraphs, right, about why Belfast was targeted. It was an obvious strategic target, okay? You had Harland and Wolf and the broader shipbuilding industry. Britain was, of course, an island. An island needs to, in wartime, needs to be supplied. The merchant navy, the uh, supply of ships was vitally important. So this was going to be anybody could see that the, when the Nazis looked at how to, um, what, what cities to target, they were going to target Glasgow because you had the Clyde where ships were built. They were going to target Liverpool because it was a massive international port. They were going to target Belfast because of the, the shipbuilding industry there. Um, it was also a vital transatlantic port. And don't forget as well that, you know, there were a lot of goods, even though at this stage in the war, the USA was still neutral. There was a huge amount of traffic with these Atlantic convoys from North America, Canada, northern United States, across to Britain. And one of the staging points for that um, North Atlantic uh, trade was Belfast. So again, this made Belfast an attractive target for Luftwaffe bombers. And Belfast was, and Northern Ireland itself was a um, important centre of food production, particularly of flour. Now again, what do we use flour to do? Make bread. Britain during the first, the Second World War, again, you had, we, we, we looked at this, and I can do a video on this if you want me to as well, just let me know, um, either in class or send me a message on this. Um, we need to think about what the home front in Britain, and Britain had to uh, produce its own food. The ability to import food was essentially uh, uh, taken away from Britain during um, the U-boat war, the, 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 the war in the North Atlantic. So Belfast with its flour mills and its ability to produce the raw materials for food to supply Britain was again an obvious target. So the German policy was to attack cities. Cities where the term was blitzed, which means to drop bombs on um, um, the, initially, initially the idea was to drop bombs on, you know, um, economically important targets. I said like docks be very important or anywhere where there's um, factories or uh, manufacturing, anything that can help Britain survive um, the war. But very quickly, the Germans just started bombing whole areas of cities. So civilian centres were targeted as a way of basically using terror to try and damage British morale, to try and you know, uh, put pressure on the British government to give up the fight. The idea of interrupting uh, production of war material, as I said, would reduce Britain's ability to fly, fight, and that's why this idea of aerial bombing or blitz tactics were adopted by the Germans and by the Luftwaffe. Now, it wasn't as if the Belfast authorities didn't know that this was coming. Prior to the bombing of Belfast, London was bombed, Glasgow, Liverpool. On the 14th of November, 1940, 50,000 homes were destroyed. 554 people were killed in the bombing of Coventry. Coventry was an important centre of production for vehicles. So cars, tanks, trucks, things you need in a mechanised warfare. That bombing should have been the alarm bell to, to tell Belfast, look, you are vulnerable here. They're targeting not just major cities, but other, but other important uh, centres of production. So that was a crucial um, alarm bell that was not listened to. So Belfast was subjected to these attacks. The first attack came on the 7th, um, sorry, but on the night of the 7th to the 8th of April 1941. The second attack, and again, you need to know these details if you're writing about this, between the 15th, the night of the 15th, 16th of April, same year, and then uh, in May on the 4th to the 6th. By the time the three attacks were over, 1,100 people were dead. That's a big casualty list. 56,000 houses were damaged. That's half of all the houses in Belfast. 100,000 people were therefore homeless and there was 20 million pounds of damage done to property. So very, very, very significant. You need to know those stats if you're writing about this. Then zone in. That fire raid on the 4th to the 5th of June was incredibly damaging. 200 aircraft were involved. 100,000 
incendiary bombs. Remember what I told you that means? Bombs designed to start fires were dropped in just three hours. By May 1941, you had 200,000 refugees from the bombing of Belfast. And essentially, the industrial capacity of Belfast for a significant period was destroyed. So the, the attack was um, successful. Finally, it's important to note that the southern state did respond to this. The southern state did um, send, De Valera in the south did send the Dublin Fire Brigade to assist um, um, with the fighting of the fires. And not long after that, on the 30th, the, night, the 30th, 31st of May 1941, the North Strand in Dublin was bombed by the Luftwaffe. At the time, the Irish government said it was an error, that they thought they were over Belfast or over Liverpool, and that wouldn't have been that unusual. But after the war, it was found that that was a deliberate um, intended attack in order to send a warning to the neutral state of era, you're either neutral or you're not. So I think there's lots of details there. That's a good topic to revise, okay? And um, hopefully you found that in some way useful. And you have your mind map. Use your mind map to do your revision. Okay, good stuff. Thank you.